So, in the beginning, it was all about bread, or rather, it was about frustration, about really bad bread. Because I was living in Berlin, and at that time, it was 2007, the bread that you got when you went to a really good restaurant was really crappy bake-off baguette, white bake-off baguette. Well, Germany is not a country known for bad bread. Germany has a great sourdough culture, but it's rye sourdough. And, you know, bread is like wine. You don't want to drink a Riesling with everything, right? So I knew I needed to find a way to get really good white bread. I made a lot of research and I figured out that the trick was to skip the yeast and go to traditional methods and start to bake with sourdough. It takes way more time and that's why a lot of bakers are not doing that anymore, because that's expensive. So I started to bake and I started to practice like crazy. I was baking every day and I wanted to make that perfect loaf of white bread, which is chewy and airy on the inside with a hard crust and still easy to digest and also nutritious, not like a toast bread, which is like a white sheet of paper. And I was traveling at this time. I was uh, traveling a lot, like 170 days of the year. I was in the fashion business and maybe that has something to do with it also, actually, because it Bread keeps you grounded. <laughs> bread is something very homey. And um, it was a perfect mix. So I brought my sourdough everywhere I went in the world. I went to Paris. I brought my sourdough, I think, 18 times I counted to Paris. I also brought it four times into the US. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, it's been numerous times to Sweden. It's been to Belgium, it's been obviously all around Germany because I was traveling a lot in Germany. And the travel, the journey showed or proved to be a perfect teacher for me actually. Because when you bake with sourdough, you can't, you have to be really sensible. Um, it's not easy, it's not like a normal white bread where you just can throw everything together and you can, you know the time, how long everything will take. You can just even throw it in a baking machine and you're gonna have a bread afterwards, but that does not work with sourdough because you, you're in, like everything is influencing it, the weather is influencing it, the flour is important, all ingredients is important because if you only use three ingredients, it's only water, flour and salt and sourdough, which is flour and water and bacteria. <laughs> you, when you only have three ingredients, they all need to be the best. And on my journeys, the weather was always different, the humidity was different, sometimes it was hard to get a good flower, uh, my mood was different, my schedule was different, and I had to play around this. And I learned to be sensible. I also started to give away my bread. Um, I gave it to friends, to colleagues, to clients, to neighbors, and the only thing I wanted back was honest opinions so I could get better. After about a year, I started to get things back. And it, it was anything and everything. And it didn't really stop. Like, it was the first time I got two tickets for the Philharmonie, <laughs> which has a high monetary value if you compare it with a normal bread. Uh, I got um, offers to help taking pictures of my bread. I got offers to repair my computer, to <laughs> repair my bike, to uh, take a guitar lesson, um, singing lessons, breathing lessons, yoga lessons, a lot of learning. <laughs> uh, I was quite amazed about this because people don't just give stuff. You know, I studied business, so I'm quite drilled that we are all going to act opportunistic, and I did not expect that this would happen. But 
if you think about it, I was actually giving away for a whole year or more than a year without expecting anything back. And I think that's kind of the key to all of this and why it has been working so well. Because it's all in the intention and if, if you give, that's my lesson. And Listen up, because that's important. Because if you give without the intention to get something back or the expectation to get something back, you will get back times thousands. At least I have learned that. And I've traded over 1,400 breads around the world by now. And uh, it has really widened my horizon. I started to blog about this. Um, I started to write about what I was trading, what the bread brought me to, where it took me in the world. Uh, I did this parallel to my work, so I got to get around quite well. And um, again, it kept me grounded, and it made it... The people I met on this journey also made me realize you know, to, to or not realize, but just to appreciate the small things in life and appreciate the things with, made with quality and made with, with love and a good intention, simply. What I trade, I use again. I, for example, this bread here, uh, I had traded salt with a salt maker from Iceland. And for the next bread I was going to make, I want to use this salt. So I called up the salt maker and asked him about the salt content in the water where he had harvested the salt. And it was in a nature reserve in the northwest of Iceland. And as clean as can be, this salt is, right? And he told, me it's, um, he told me the salt content in the water. I made a bread, actually, with the same salt content in my water, and then I added flour and my sourdough. So in the end, this bread is nothing but salt water and flour. And I did a crust <laughs> with uh, seaweed. I like that. I like to play with my bread as if it's a white canvas because it's just a simple bread with just flour, water, and salt. And then whoever brings things to me and tell me a story, I'm painting on this white canvas their story. That's at least how I see my bread. When I started to bake and to trade, I thought it was all about bread and that this project was about bread and about quality. But I don't think it's all about bread anymore. However, I think that bread played a crucial role to make this project grow so large globally. Because there is something in bread that we all understand. It is classless. It's not bound to religion. It's not bound to a culture. And again, it's very homey. You know, we bring it when we are invited somewhere together with salt when we invite it somewhere to someone's home for the first time. And we do that in Germany, but they also do that in Afghanistan. And bread has been a great vehicle for good and warm and honest values. And it's also been a door opener. I've been able to bake and learn from some of the best chefs around the world and bakers around the world, learning from producer, as I've been trading for them, getting inspired by them. I've also been able to go to Afghanistan and learn from women and get in contact with women, which is practically impossible as a Western woman, and learn from their baking. And it's not like I think that the bread exchange or a bread exchange can and will <laughs> change the world, but I actually do believe that the attitude in it can. And it has definitely changed and opened my horizon. And, you know, we are in a time where borders between countries and cultures, religions, and, yeah, classes are growing higher and higher. And I realized that I found a tool in my bread to cross these borders. And 
I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> Thank you.